Right now, the man named as the original target of the raid on Brianna Taylor's apartment is facing new drug charges. Thanks for joining us. I'm Grace McKenna. Saturday, St. Matthews police charged Jamarcus Glover and two other people for drug trafficking in the Taylor Berry neighborhood. According to an arrest citation, Glover used kids under the age of 18 to transport and sell heroin, fentanyl and other illegal drugs. Glover was the original target of the police raid leading to Brianna Taylor's death in 2020. At the time, police believed Glover was receiving packages at Taylor's home. Taylor and her boyfriend at the time, Kenneth Walker, were asleep when the raid started. Walker, a legal gun owner, fired what he said was a warning shot hitting an officer. Three officers immediately returned fire, killing Taylor. Glover was arrested on drug charges the same night Taylor was killed. He was sentenced on those charges in November 2021 to home incarceration and a five year probation. In this current case, Glover is no longer in custody after posting his $20,000 bond. He's expected back in court Wednesday at 9. One of the officers who fired the shots into Taylor's home is now facing federal charges in connection to that night. Brett Hankison fired 10 rounds into Taylor's apartment. One of those rounds entered a neighboring apartment where a child was sleeping. His trial was supposed to play out in August. However, it was pushed back to later this month due to the massive amount of evidence in the case. Hankison's new court date is October the 30th. Right now, Metro Police are looking into two overnight shootings. The first happened around 3 on South 6th Street. It's about a mile from U L's campus. Police say a man was shot and was taken to the hospital. He's expected to be OK. Just about an hour later, though, police tell us there was a double homicide in the 600 block of Douglas Park in the South Side neighborhood. No information on the victims or suspects in either shooting have been released. Right now, there is a search for someone who shot and killed a man in the Iroquois neighborhood. It happened Saturday morning. Metro police say they initially got a report of someone who'd been shot arriving at Mary Ann Elizabeth Hospital in a van around 3.30 in the morning. Police say he died inside that vehicle. Detectives later discovered two different scenes in the Iroquois neighborhood, one on Haskins Avenue and the other around the block on Huntoon Avenue. As of now, there are no suspects. Anyone with information is asked to call 574 LMPD. We want you to take a look at your screen right now. This is really important information for you. Louisville police are searching for this young girl, Caitlin Douglas. She is 12 years old. Police say she was last seen Thursday in the 4900 block of Southside Drive. They also say she's intellectually disabled and may seem confused or disoriented. If you know anything or have seen her, call 574 LMPD. Every week we know that an average of 41 Kentuckians lose their lives to a drug overdose. That's about six people a day. Those are the latest state figures and for some it's proof that even with progress we have a long way to go in the fight to save lives. WHAS 11's Connor Steffen introduces us to two mothers who know that loss all too well and explains the action they're taking for change. Shuffling through old family photos is painful for Tammy Bob. It's not something I do every day now because I just look at them. The images are a window into a past life. She'll never get back. He passed June 8th. My birthday's July 9th. Two summers ago, her son Chase took a Xanax after 15 months of sobriety. What he didn't know was it was laced with fentanyl. And this is him when he reached the top. Angela Parkerson shares a similar story of loss to fentanyl. Her son, Nick, was only 24 years old. He was killed in Bargetown, Kentucky, April 23rd, 2021. The two moms, bonded by unthinkable loss, use their pain to bring about progress. They're looking to bring that message to every road, roundabout, and stoplight in Kentucky with this license plate. It'll be available to drivers in Kentucky DMVs and online next year. It says fentanyl changes everything. Stigma kills silence is deadly. Now, what at first glance may seem like a small gesture is actually a major milestone for these families because in Kentucky, in the fight against fentanyl, visibility is key. I hope they learn about fentanyl and I hope they reach out to their kids. In Bardstown, Kentucky, Connor Steffen, WHAS 11 on your side. Parkerson says the group has to sell 500 license plates in the first year for production to continue. If you or someone you know is struggling with addiction, help is available. You can call the National Addiction Hotline anytime at 1-800-662-4357. We also have a list of more resources on our website, whas11.com. 
Jefferson County Public Schools are on fall break this week, and the district is expected to take the time to begin installing weapons detection systems in some high schools. JCPS has confirmed to us already that Eastern High, one of the largest in the district, will be in the first round of installations. Just within the past month, the principal there told us a student held up a knife during a fight with another student at lunch. The weapon detection system installation also comes days after a weapon was found at Doss High School, which forced the school to postpone some homecoming events. This is bringing guns, knives, all that. It really scares me because I leave, my children leave me, and I know they good when they leave, but I worry about them coming home with all the violence that's going on in JCPS. The units from Evolve Technology will be used to catch concealed weapons like guns as students walk into school each morning. JCBS leaders say they'll install the first units in high schools and then move to middle schools next school year. This is important for folks who may need some help with their energy bills. The Low Income Home Energy Assistance Program, known as LIHEAP, is now open for early registration. Today, seniors and disabled people on fixed incomes can apply for assistance with their electric bill. You do have to live in Jefferson County, be over the age of 60 with an income at or below 150% of the federal poverty guidelines. That breaks down to about $45,000 a year for a family of four. If you are not elderly or disabled, you can start applying for LIHEAP on November 6th. Appointments are needed to apply. You can also apply now as well for MSD's Senior Citizen Discount Program, something a little different here. If you are 65 or older with an annual income of $35,000 or less, you might be eligible to get a 30% discount on the wastewater portion of your water bill. You will need proof of an account with MSD or Louisville Water. Registration for both the LIHEAP and MSD discount programs is open until October the 31st or until appointments are filled. The site is louisvilleky.caschedule.com. You can also call 991-8391.